So I'm starting on page 698, line 990. The Supreme Lord is speaking to Savitri. Now will I do in thee my marvelous works. I will fasten thy nature with my cords of strength. Subdue to my delight thy spirit's limbs and make thee a vivid knot of all my bliss and build in thee my proud and crystal home. Thy days shall be my shafts of power and light. Thy night my starry mysteries of joy and all my clouds lie tangled in thy hair and all my spring tides marry in thy mouth O sun word Thou shalt raise the earth soul to light and bring down God into the lives of men. Earth shall be my work chamber and my house, my garden of life to plant a seed divine. When all thy work in human time is done, the mind of earth shall be a home of light, the life of earth a tree growing towards heaven, the body of earth a tabernacle of God. Awakened from the mortal's ignorance, men shall be lit with the eternal's ray and the glory of my sun lift in their thoughts and feel in their hearts the sweetness of my love and in their acts my powers miraculous drive. My will shall be the meaning of their days, living for me, by me, in me they shall live. In the heart of my creation's mystery, I will enact the drama of thy soul. Inscribe the long romance of thee and me. I will pursue thee across the centuries. Thou shalt be hunted through the world by love. Naked of ignorance protecting veil and without covert from my radiant gods. No shape shall screen thee from my divine desire. Nowhere shalt thou escape my living eyes. In the nudity of thy discovered self, in a bare identity with all that is, disrobed of thy covering of humanity, divested of the dense veil of human thought, made one with every mind and body and heart, 
made one with all nature and with self and God, summing in thy single soul my mystic world, I will possess in thee my universe. The universe find all I am in thee. Yes, please start, Martin. No, will I do in thee my marvelous works. I will fast in thy nature with my cause of strength. Subdue to my delight thy spirit's limbs and make thee a vivid knot of all my bliss and build in thee my proud and crystal home. Mm, thank you. So he's continuing what we started to read last week. This promise to Savitri, this prophecy, it even sometimes sounds like a warning to Savitri of what will be her experience in future because of this uh, great tapasya that she's done and this victory that she has gained for earth and men. He says, you, Savitri, as a human individual, you are going to be the, the framework in which I'm going to do all my marvelous works. I will show all the amazing things I can do. You will experience them in yourself. I'm going to fasten your whole nature, all the different parts of your natural being with my cords of strength. The whole nature will be linked together by this divine strength, force, power. And it's as if, he says, your spirit even has limbs, has a body, and I'm going to subdue thy spirit's limbs to my delight. I'm just going to enjoy everything through you. No? I'm going to make you a vivid knot, a point which brings together all my bliss. And I'm going to turn you into my proud and crystal home. Crystal in the sense of something absolutely transparent and pure. In the Matrimandir we have the crystal there. Mother has said that it is two things, or she has said two things about it. That it's the object of concentration when we are there in the Matrimandir chamber and we are learning to concentrate. We can concentrate on that wonderful transparent globe which is receiving the light from above and spreading it through the whole room. And she says it's the, the symbol of the future realization, what will be the future state of mankind and the earth. So when I try to understand that, the meaning of this crystal, I think that it's so clear and transparent because every single molecule in that globe is in its correct place.
place. There's nothing out of place, otherwise there would be a flaw somewhere. For people who made that globe, they managed to make it absolutely pure and flawless. So the future realization will be when every human being is exactly in their right place, receiving the divine light from above and spreading it out everywhere. So it's something like that that he's telling to Savitri. You will be my proud and crystal home. You will be radiating my presence, my energy, my bliss and strength. Super. Thy day shall be my shape of power and light. Thy nights my story, mysteries of joy, and all my cloud like candle in thy hair, and all my spent day merry in the mouth. In the mouth. Yeah. In the mouth. Yeah. So this is just a wonderful poetic evocation of something, no? He says, your days, your days of life, hmm, will be my shafts. This means arrows. Hmm? I will be shooting my arrows of power and delight and truth and beauty, my shafts of power and light. You will be carrying those powerful arrows, those arrows of light. And your nights will be my starry mysteries of joy. The days are the dynamic times, no? And then the night perhaps is when we are more at rest, more in a meditative musing state. So the days are these powerful arrows of power and light, but your night, there's something mysterious about the night, my starry mysteries of joy, the night lit up by these uncountable stars, every one of which is representing a shining truth light. And all my clouds will lie tangled in thy hair. We sometimes think about a woman who has beautiful hair, that it's like a cloud around her head. Something like that. And all my beautiful clouds, they'll be there in your hair. And all my Spring tides marry all the lovelinesses of spring, that fresh magical time of the spring in the of the year when everything is fresh and new. That will, all those spring tides will come together in the beauty of your mouth. When he describes in this poem earlier in book four the birth of Savitri. He describes the spring as being a very, very special time of year. It's a time when we get this feeling of renewal and freshness and new possibility. And he says, it's a time of year when we feel the touch of the ever newness of the eternal and the transcendence. So all those qualities of springtide are going to be expressed in the beauty of your mouth. Chandra. O Sandwood, thou shalt face the earth so too late, and bring down God into the leaves of man. Yet shall be my work chamber and my house. My garden of life to plant a seed divine. Yes. 
So he calls her Sun Word. This is somehow in connection with her name. The name of Savitri is connected with the Sun God, Savitr. But also of Savitri as the, the wife, the Shakti of Lord Brahma, the creator God. No? She represents the word of creation, the creative command that brings things into existence. You're bringing light, you're bringing creative power, he says. And through all this that you have done, you have gained the possibility, the capacity to lift up the soul of the earth towards the light of the highest consciousness. And at the same time, you've got the power to bring God down into the lives of men so that their life can become a divine life. So because of you and your prayer and your will, your aspiration, your choice, earth is going to become my work chamber, the place where I'm going to show what a marvelous artist and craftsman I am. And it will be my house. I'm going to inhabit all the forms and appearances and beings of the earth. And earth will become a garden, my garden of life. And there I'm going to plant a divine seed which is going to flower into the divine life. Chandra, this in word line 1000, we've got bring down God into the lives of men. There's a lot of confusion when we come across this word. Lives and lives. The spelling is the same. No? So how can we tell which way we have to say it? If it's lives, somebody must be living. We must look who is it that lives. Hmm? It's a verb. But there's nothing like that here in this line. Hmm? So here it is the plural of life. Lives. It's a noun. So like that we can always tell what is the right way to pronounce it. But here uh, uh, it's uh, confusing to me. Uh, we we know that uh, seed of life and uh, spirituality and divinity was sown right from the beginning. Yes. And here he says, now we will do it. So, <laughs> confused. No, the thing is that, of course, the Lord, the Lord is inhabiting all this. But at the moment, he's veiled. Yes. Hmm? He's involved, he's hidden. But he's promising to Savitri that through you, through this prayer and aspiration of yours, I'm going to be revealed. I'm going to be working openly. Everybody will be able to experience it and see it. That's my confusion. It's also said that right from before Savitri also, this was planned throughout. Yes. And because of Savitri, maybe he made more efforts or something like that. But it was planned from the beginning and here also you see. But you, in what we've been reading in the last weeks, no, he was saying, it's not time. Wait. Don't, be pre don't bring about this great transformation prematurely. Yes. No? And, um, but she's been insisting. And if we look in Sri Aurobindo's letters about this poem, he explains that this is something that has is supposed to have happened in the very far back distant past. In fact, in the poem, he describes King Aswapati, who before he becomes the human father of Savitri, that he was the first human being who has this 
Vedic knowledge. No? So all this, it's not happening now, it's happening far, far back in the past. And he said at that time, some special effort was necessary to open up these possibilities, the possibility of immortality and a divine life on earth. So that is the symbolism that he sees in this poem. So now the, the Lord is speaking to Savitri in that far back time, be before even... the story of the times. Yes. Before even the, the Vedic rishis, or when they were just beginning to appear, those original forefathers, and he's giving this promise. And we will see that he's not saying it's all going to happen immediately. In fact, he didn't say that, no. He said it shall all be, it'll be written in Destiny's book and it'll be worked out by eternal time. And as we go on, we'll see that this is a promise for many ages in the future, this role that Savitri herself and Satyavan will play until finally it's possible for the divine life to be manifested on earth. Um, Dana, yes. When all the work in human time is done, the mind of air shall be a home of life. The life of air, a tree growing towards heaven. The body of air, a tabernacle of God. Yes. So when all your work in human time is done, that doesn't mean in just one lifetime, in many, many, many lifetimes. When your work is complete, after all the millennia, the mind of, life, uh, mind of earth, the earth consciousness, instead of being not only ignorant but even nescient, it will be a home of light. And the life of earth will be like a great tree, always growing and growing and growing, spreading its branches and its leaves towards heaven. And the body of earth, the material body of earth, will be a shrine for the divine, in which he will be revealed and worshipped. Lena. Awaken from the mortal's ignorance. Men shall give it with eternal sway, and the glory of my son lived in their thoughts, and feel in their hearts the sweetness of my love, and in their acts my powers miraculous drive. Yes. So he says, men, human beings. Maybe even not just some men, maybe most men will feel that light of the eternal filling their consciousness, their thoughts, the glory of my sun lift, as if the sun has such power to lift their thoughts up. And they will feel in their hearts not just human love, but the sweetness of divine love no? and they will feel in their action that it is the divine who is acting through them. My powers, miraculous drive, able to achieve things which ordinary human beings can't achieve unless the divine force works through them. Okay. My will shall be the means of their days, living for me, by me, in me I shall live. In the heart of my creation's mystery, I will enact the drum of thy soul, inscribe the long romance of the enemy. Hmm. So this is for humanity, my will shall be the meaning of their days. They will know that they exist only to fulfill 
the will of the divine. So human beings will be living for the Lord and they will feel that they couldn't live and they couldn't act if it weren't for the Lord living and acting in them by me and they will feel that they are living in the Lord completely enveloped and penetrated by his presence for me by me in me they shall live and in the heart of my creation's mystery there will always be something mysterious in fact I think the world will get more and more wonderful and miraculously mysterious no? in the very heart of this mystery of the creation I will be acting out the drama of your soul savitri the long romance of thee and me a romance is two things it's a love affair a love story and it's a story full of adventure unexpected happenings that uh, that love story between you incarnation of the supreme divine mother and me uh, that will be written out and acted out in the material universe Sri Aurobindo has written another wonderful poem it's a page or a bit more than a page long it's called the world game and he says it is the Ishwara the Lord speaking to the Ishwari his partner his mate and he's telling about this long romance of the whole history of the universe has been their romance you know you can find it in collected poems in Shobindo's collected poems yeah the world game it's called thank you you can read ganga lakshmi I will text you when I cross to Santa Maria. Saint Julie. Thou shalt be a pattern to the world by love. Naked of ignorance, protected in the and without cover from my radiant words. Yes. So you won't be able to escape me. I will be hunting you and following you through all time. You will be hunted through the world by love. And there'll be nothing to protect you, no no thick veil of ignorance, no. This protecting veil that uh, enables us not to notice that the lord is with us all the time and without covert there will be no covering hiding you from my radiant gods all the universal powers there with their powerful light joel No shape shall screen thee from my divine desire. Nowhere shall thou escape my living eyes. In the nudity of thy discovered self, in a bare identity with all that is, this robe of thy covering of humanity, thy vestige of the dense veil of human thought, made one with every mind and body and heart made one with nature <coughs> and with self and god summing in thy single soul my mystic world i will possess in thee 
my universe. The universe find all I am in thee. Mm. So whatever shape or form you take, it won't hide you, it won't screen you from my divine desire to possess you. You won't be able to escape my living eyes anywhere, ever. You have discovered yourself, he says. You've become naked in that sense. There's no covering of protecting ignorance. And because of that, that you've discovered who you really are, actually you are identified with, you feel and experience your oneness with everything that exists. You're no longer just a human being in this disguise. You'll be disrobed, that robe, that disguise will be taken away. And this very heavy, dense veil of human thought, of human mentality, will be taken away from you. You will experience your oneness with every mind and body and heart. You will feel your oneness with all nature, with the one divine self, and with God. In your soul, your single soul, you will be summing up the whole of my mystical world. So I will be able to possess my whole universe by possessing you. And the universe will be able to find everything about me, about my divine nature, by knowing you. When we read in the Life Divine, as we are doing now on Wednesdays, and Sri Aurobindo is uh, describing for us the state of the supramentalized consciousness. He's describing these kind of experiences and realities, but he's doing it in prose, he's doing it in philosophical language that's rather bare and abstract and perhaps difficult for us to grasp. But here, when he does it in poetic terms, it's so vivid and so living, we can perhaps much more deeply, imaginatively enter in to the experience than when we read about it in prose. But if this seems very mysterious to us, we can look in the prose, and there he's made it a bit more clear to our reasoning understanding. Is that uh, Kamala sitting at the back? Yes. Thou shalt bear all things that all things may change. Thou shalt fill all with my splendor and my bliss. Thou shalt meet all with thy transmuting soul. I think you stop there, Kamala. Hmm? So thou, you, Savitri, are going to have to bear everything, all the difficulties, all the sufferings and also all the intense delight. You're going to have to bear that in your individual being so that everything can change, so that everything can be transformed. 
you will fill all experience and everything with my splendor and my bliss and you will meet all you will confront everything in the universe with thy transmuting soul transmuting is like transforming you'll be able to meet all that suffering all that enmity whatever there is the whole range of experience in the universe and you will be able to change it to transmute it into splendor and into bliss Tom. As shales by my infinitude above and quivering in immensities below, pursued by my by me to my mind's waters fast, oceanic with the searches of my life. The swimmer rose between two leaping seas by my outer pains and inner sweetnesses, finding my soul, my joy, in my opposite mysteries. Thou shalt respond to me from every nerve. Hmm. This is a physical experience he's describing. Hmm? Assailed, attacked by those powerful infinitudes above and quivering with the intensity of experience in all these immensities, these vastnesses below in the creation being pursued by me through everything that my mind can conceal with, conceive of this wall less vast and feeling yourself like an ocean oceanic with the surges of my life the powerful waves of feeling and emotion no? all the life urges and experiences you will be like a swimmer swimming in that ocean in that wall less vast and you, you will be swimming uh, lost between two leaping seas two really very powerful seas on the one hand in nature in the universe in the immensities of the creation you will be feeling my outer pains all the pangs and sufferings and clashes and discordances of the outer nature and at the same time you'll be swimming in the ocean of my inner sweetnesses and you will be finding the kind of joy that I feel in my opposite mysteries the mysteries of the outer pains and the inner sweetnesses you will be you will have to respond to me with every nerve in your body in your being in your whole being Vani your vision shall compel thy coursing breath Thy heart shall drive thee on the wheel of works. Thy mind shall urge thee through the flames of thought to meet me in the abyss and on the heights, to feel me in the tempest and the calm, and love me in the noble and the wild, in beautiful things and terrible desires. Yes. Coursing, it means running, racing. 
So your, your prana, your life energy will be very dynamically impelled all the time by a vision, a power of vision. Your heart, the feelings of your heart will drive you on the wheel of works. You won't be able to live in calm and peace. You're going to have to live a very, very dynamic experience constantly because of the way that your heart connects you to everything in the universe. Your mind will be driving you dynamically, urging you through the flames of thought. Also a very powerful kind of thought energy. Because all the time you will be looking for me in the abyss, in the dark depths, and on the heights. And you will be feeling me in the tempest in the terrible, powerful storm and in the calm when there's no storm, when everything is peaceful and beautiful. And it's me you will be loving and you will be loving me in the noble, in the great and heroic and beautiful souls and also in the vile, the darkened, mean, petty, miserable beings. You will see me in all of them. You will be desiring me in beautiful things and in terrible things equally. Desire is not for, terrible is not for desire. Yes, my, no, in beautiful desire things, desire. things and terrible. Yes, you will desire me. No. It's parallel with love in the previous line. You will desire me in beautiful things and in terrible things. Yeah. You read Narendra? The pains of hell shall be to thee my kiss. The flowers of heaven persuade thee with my touch. My fiercest mass shall be my protection's being. Music shall find thee in the voice of source. Beauty pursue thee through the core of flame. Thou shalt know me in the rolling of the spheres and cross me in the atoms of the world. Mm. So these are contradictory things or opposite things that he's describing. No? You will love, desire me in beautiful things and terrible things. And the pains of hell, the intense sufferings of the lowest vital regions, you will experience them as my kiss, my embrace. On the other hand, all the beautiful flowers of heaven. I will also be persuading you with my touch. My fiercest masks, all the most terrible disguises that I put on will bring you my attractions, show you how attractive I can be even when I'm disguised so terribly. And when you hear conflict, the voice of swords fighting, it will be like music to you. You will hear the beauty and the music even in that conflict. Beauty will follow you everywhere, be hunting you everywhere through the core of flame, the very heart of uh, intensity of burning passionate feeling you will know me you will recognize me my presence my power my beauty my love in the rolling of the spheres all the uh, all the, the planets and galaxies and 
all the realms in the universe, the vast, those vast spheres. But you will also meet me, you will come across me in the atoms of the world. Inside all this matter, there are little atoms whirling away. You know? That is the same, the same Lord who is there in the rolling of the spheres. The electrons and positrons. Yes, all those subatomic particles are whirling around. Yeah. This is mystical poetry at its highest pitch. I told you, now we are, we reached the climax of the poem. It's, it's something unique. You will not find poetry like this uh, anywhere else. For the time being, we don't know about the future. We'll stop there for today. Now will I do in thee my marvelous works. I will fasten thy nature with my cords of strength, subdue to my delight thy spirit's limbs and make thee a vivid knot of all my bliss, and build in thee my proud and crystal home. Thy days shall be my shafts of power and light, Thy nights, my starry mysteries of joy, and all my clouds lie tangled in thy hair, and all my spring tides marry in thy mouth. O sun word, thou shalt raise the earth soul to light and bring down God into the lives of men. Earth shall be my work chamber and my house my garden of life to plant a seed divine. When all thy work in human time is done, the mind of earth shall be a home of light, the life of earth a tree growing towards heaven, the body of earth, a tabernacle of God. Awakened from the mortal's ignorance, men shall be lit with the eternal's ray. And the glory of my sun lift in their thoughts and feel in their hearts the sweetness of my love and in their acts my power's miraculous drive. My will shall be the meaning of their days. 
living for me, by me, in me they shall live. In the heart of my creation's mystery, I will enact the drama of thy soul, inscribe the long romance of thee and me. I will pursue thee across the centuries, Thou shalt be hunted through the world by love. Naked of ignorance protecting veil and without covert from my radiant gods. No shape shall screen thee from my divine desire. Nowhere shalt thou escape my living eyes. In the nudity of thy discovered self, in a bare identity with all that is, Disrobed of thy covering of humanity, Divested of the dense veil of human thought, Made one with every mind and body and heart, Made one with all nature, and with self and God, summing in thy single soul my mystic world, I will possess in thee my universe, the universe Find all I am in thee. Thou shalt bear all things, That all things may change. Thou shalt fill all with my splendor and my bliss. Thou shalt meet all with thy transmuting soul. Assailed by my infinitudes above, And quivering in immensities below, Pursued by me, through my mind's wallless vast. Oceanic with the surges of my life, a swimmer lost between two leaping seas, by my outer pains and inner sweetnesses, finding my joy in my opposite mysteries, thou shalt respond to me from every nerve. A vision shall compel thy coursing breath. Thy heart shall drive thee on the wheel of works. Thy mind shall urge thee through the flames of thought to meet me in the abyss and on the heights.
hearts to feel me in the tempest and the calm and love me in the noble and the vile in beautiful things and terrible desire the pains of hell shall be to thee my kiss the flowers of heaven persuade thee with my touch my fiercest masks shall my attractions bring music shall find thee in the voice of swords beauty pursue thee through the core of flame thou shalt know me in the rolling of the spheres and cross me in the atoms of the world 